Item number SCP-2902 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2902-1 and 2 are contained at Site-73 in a humanoid containment unit. SCP-2902-1 can request to perform for personnel three times a month. Interviews should be conducted on a bi-weekly basis to assess SCP-2902-1's morale as well as to gain possible information on its origins. SCP-2902-2 has been allowed to stay with SCP-2902-1. SCP-2902-1, as of January 29, 2008, a 32-year-old human male of Indian descent named Nandan Chakrabarti. SCP-2902-1 is 172 cm tall. 66 kg, and when not performing, speaks with a moderate Indian accent. SCP-2902-1 is skilled in ventriloquism, often using this ability during its performances with SCP-2902-2. SCP-2902-2 is a male Maine Coon Cat with a gray mottled fur coloration. It is 90 cm long and weighs 11 kg. SCP-2902-1 refers to SCP-2902-2 as Miles. SCP-2902-2 is affectionate towards SCP-2902-1, and often takes part in its performances. Both SCP-2902-1 and 2 possess the ability to have their skeletons completely separate from their bodies. The outer skins of both do not suffer any muscle, nerve, or organ damage during or after the skeleton's exit. Both their skins and skeletons retain full mobility, however, due to lack of support, the former becomes limp and moves in an uncoordinated manner. SCP-2902-1 removes its skeleton by bisecting itself vertically or horizontally, which it achieves through pulling on its face or stomach area, respectively. Its body will open in a hinge-like manner, accompanied by a sound similar to tearing fabric. During the time its skeleton exits, there are no visible muscles, blood, or organs in SCP-2902-1. Instead, only solid black space fills its inner body. After its skeleton exits completely, SCP-2902-1's skin will reclose. SCP-2902-1 can speak through both its skin and skeleton, though only one at a time. SCP-2902-1 often alternates between the two while speaking for dramatic effect. Instead of opening its skin, SCP-2902-2's skeleton appears to phase and rise through its upper back. Unlike SCP-2902-1, SCP-2902-2 is able to control both bodies simultaneously. Of note is that SCP-2902-2 lacks three vertebrae near the middle of its back. This does not appear to have any detrimental effect on SCP-2902-2's bodily functions. SCP-2902-1 claims that it and SCP-2902-2 came from the GOI Herman Fuller's Circus of Disquieting, but were separated from the organization after SCP-2902-2 became ill during a performance. Against its colleagues' suggestions, SCP-2902-1 tried to take SCP-2902-2 to a medical clinic several kilometers away from the circus grounds. The group left the grounds while both were still away. Subjects were discovered in San Francisco, California, USA as street performers, and subsequently taken into Foundation custody. Since its containment, SCP-2902-1 had been generally friendly to personnel, expressing an interest in entertaining them with its abilities until the circus comes back to pick me up. Interview SCP-2902-1, March 27, 2004 Interviewed SCP-2902-1 Interviewer Researcher Lucy Chang Forward Interview conducted to learn information about SCP-2902-1 and 2's abilities. SCP-2902-1 and 2 have been in containment for 12 days. Begin Log 1050 Hello, Miss. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, SCP-2902-1. I'm Lucy Chang. Would you mind answering a few questions right now? Of course, of course. Not a problem at all, Miss. But first, let me ask you something. Would you like to see Nanda in the human skeleton closet and Miles the Bone Cat put on a show for you? I assure you, it would be great, like nothing you've ever seen before. SCP-2902-2 walks up to Researcher Chang before sitting and tilting its head. We might actually have room for that once we're finished here. It will let us have a first-hand look at what you can do. Alright, Miss Chang. Ask away, please. 
SCP-2902-2 separates, its skeleton walking away from Researcher Cheng while its skin rolls behind it. It does not return until the end of the interview. How long have you had your abilities? <laughs> well, Miss Cheng, that is a very long story. I will try to keep it as short as I can. I can listen. <laughs> Miss Cheng, you are very kind. Let me begin the tale of Nandan Chakrabarty, a poor boy from a poor family whose life was forever meant to be different. SCP-2902-1 stands up and raises arms above head. Throughout the recount, SCP-2902-1 continuously pantomimes, gesticulates as it speaks. I've been able to do what I can do since I was a baby. At least that's what my uncle told me. He said my mother was horrified at my birth. I do not know if that was true. Uncle Rakesh was a greedy man, and he often lied to me as a child to try and keep me with him. He liked to make money by showing people my talents. At this point, SCP-2902-1 pulls on his face, releasing its skeleton. Skeleton bends over to pick up SCP-2902-1's skin, and proceeds to dangle and move it in a fashion similar to a marionette. Through Skeleton in a rougher, hearty voice. Hello, friends. Come see my nephew, Nanan the Bony Boy. In normal, speaking through skin. Oh, how I hated that name. Returns the Skeleton. Watch him leap out of his skin and dance for you. Ha ha ha! Gaffaw switches the skin. I had to be with him for eleven years. It was such a terrible time. You said your mother was frightened by you when you were born? Skeleton, dramatically. That is correct. Skeleton flings skin away. Skin falls down similar to a parachute. I was born like this. SCP-2902-1 lies down on the floor in a fetal position, and moves by shuffling its feet. Exactly like this. Skeleton gestures to itself. You were born as a skeleton? Well, skeleton stands up again and dusts itself off. Bones first. Skeleton ceases movement, freezes in an upright position. Skin of SCP-2902-1 rolls towards skeleton and stops beneath the feet. I came second. Your bones and skin were burst separately? Exactly. Repeats twice, once through skin, one through skeleton. SCP-2902-1 skeleton proceeds to put skin back on itself, similar to putting on a jacket. You can imagine the shock my mother felt when she saw a pile of baby bones. Even after I came to get her and started crying, she couldn't look at me. I don't know where my mother or father are now. Uncle Rakesh told me they gave me to him after a week. I see. Does it cause you any discomfort when you separate? Pauses and look upward before shaking its head. No, it never did. Uncomfortable sometimes. I had to get used to switching around. It was strange having my mind bounce back and forth for a while. Not anymore, though. I'm well past any difficulties. Very well, then, SCP-2902-1. How did you come across SCP-2902-2? Smiles. Oh, Miles is a very special friend to me. He was a normal cat for many years, before he could do his little tricks. But that's a story for another day. Alright, I think that's it for today. Thank you for your cooperation, SCP-2902-1. A pleasure, a pleasure, Miss Cheng. Please, feel free to bring some of your friends next time. I love having an audience. SCP-2902-1 pulls on its stomach, releasing its skeleton once more. Both the skin and the skeleton bow towards Researcher Chang as she leaves. SCP-2902-2 returns as well, and rubs against Researcher Chang's leg while purring. End Log 1107 Interview SCP-2902-1 April 9, 2004 Interviewed SCP-2902-1 Interviewer Researcher Lucy Chang Forward Interview conducted to learn information about SCP-2902-1 and 2's origins. Begin Log 1410 Good afternoon, SCP-2902-1. I see you are formal as ever, Miss Chang. Uh, I suppose it cannot be helped. You are a scientist, dedicated to researching things like… like me. I wouldn't call yourself a… Please, Miss Chang. I know I'm not normal. I know Miles isn't normal. When you're in the circus, you are praised for being not normal. But it's not a bad thing. Have you been comfortable being here these past few weeks, SCP-2902-1? Well, I cannot find anything to complain about if that's what you're asking, Miss Chang. I am in an adequate room and I am with Miles. I think of you people like my doctors. You take me in and try to make me feel better. I don't think you can cure whatever I have, though. It's a very strange condition. 
SCP-2902-1 separates, its skeleton scratching and tilting its head in puzzlement, before rejoining. Let's talk about how you arrived at the circus of disquieting. How did you become part of the organization to begin with? Hmm, I was… 10, maybe 11? I was sick of my uncle. I tried to run away many times. Many, many times. But uncle was rich and he had lots of people to catch me and bring me back. He would beat me every time I returned. I was miserable until I found Miles. Miles? SCP-2902-2? Yes and no. It was a… SCP-2902-1 appears uncomfortable. Different Miles of sorts. I found him during my last recent escape, in the bushes lining the street outside Uncle's house. He was still a kitten then, very spotty like a jaguar. He was friendly and kept following me as I tried to get away. At this point, SCP-2902-2 skeleton jumps onto SCP-2902-1's lap. SCP-2902-1 pats SCP-2902-2's head and laughs. But you were caught again? Yes, I was. SCP-2902-1 places SCP-2902-2 back on the floor. I hid Miles in my pack before Uncle's men saw me. When they took me back, I hid the bag in my closet before Uncle beat me again. I remember the only thing I was thinking of as he punched me was hoping that Miles wouldn't make any noise. After Uncle left, I took Miles out and he began to lick my bruises. I loved him. I tried to get him to leave the house because I was afraid Uncle would find him and kill him. But every night he would come back through the window and fall asleep with me. Nearly three months went by, and I was happier than I'd ever been before, and during the summer, the circus finally came to my town. SCP-2902-2 mews loudly. SCP-2902-1 scratches his chin. How did you react when you saw it? Did it interest you? Oh, you have no idea. I could hear the music, smell all the food. I decided I would try once more to escape my uncle, while the circus was still there. Miles found me. He must have been a very smart cat. There was so much to see, so many strange things. SCP-2902-2 separates both bodies continuously circling around the table. Did you meet any other people like yourself there? I didn't speak to anyone at first. I was in awe. But yes, I saw many people with strange things about them. There was a man who was on fire all the time, but he didn't scream or burn, just walked and danced like a normal person. There was a man with a huge mouth. I thought he was funny. He looked like a frog and kept eating everything. How did you end up joining them? I… I didn't join him right away. My uncle found me again. He drove up to me in his car and grabbed me by the arm. He kept shouting at me, and lots of people began to circle around us. And then, Miles tried to help me. He was such a brave cat, but Uncle pulled him off and threw me in the car. And then he… SCP-2902-1 moans and doesn't complete sentence. Silence for approximately 20 seconds. SCP-2902-2 jumps into SCP-2902-1's lap again and begins to purr. I spent all night in my room just crying to myself. Uncle locked my door and put more bars on my window. Sometimes my bones would cry. Sometimes my skin would cry. I… I tried to smother my skin beneath the bed, but my bones pulled me out. I fell asleep. When I woke up again, it was still night. There was a girl in my room. A girl? Yes, she was very pretty. I thought she had lots of flowers in her hair, but she picked one off and gave it to me. She made a face like it hurt, and I realized the flowers were her hair. What did she do after? She told me she was sorry about Miles, that she saw what had happened. She asked me if I wanted to leave, and of course I said yes. So she took my hand, and the flowers in her head grew bigger and started to glow. The one in my hand did too. The flowers and leaves pushed the bars out and we began to fly out. Her flowers lifted us up into the air, into the night. We flew back to the circus, and I knew I would have a new life, finally. I would be happy for years to come. End Log 1425 Interview SCP-2902-1, June 1, 2004 Interviewed SCP-2902-1 Interviewer Researcher Lucy Chang Forward Interview conducted to learn information about SCP-2902 Begin Log 1020 Good morning, SCP-2902-1. Hello, Miss Chang. How have you been? I've been well. I assume you know why I'm here. Yes, yes. Here to ask me more questions. What is the topic of the day this time? I'd like to talk about SCP-2902-2 today. 
Ah, and so we arrive at part two of Dandan Chakrabarty and Miles the Bone Cat. Miles, SCP-2902-1 calls to SCP-2902-2. SCP-2902-2 walks forward. We have a special person to entertain today, Miles. Put on your best act for her. SCP-2902-2 mews. SCP-2902-1 stands up and bows. SCP-2902-2 jumps on SCP-2902-1's head and bows as well. SCP-2902-2 jumps off of SCP-2902-1's head onto the floor and sits in an upright position. Forgive me, Miss Chang. Miles usually has music and other performers during this act. I'll do my best without them. SCP-2902-1 begins to clap and stamp feet in rhythm. SCP-2902-2's skin closes its eyes and nods its head, possibly trying to time the beat. After several seconds, it opens its eyes again and both bodies begin to move in a clockwise circle. SCP-2902-1 begins to sing as SCP-2902-2 pantomimes actions SCP-2902-1 describes. During the performance, SCP-2902-1 alternated its voice between a low British accent while speaking through SCP-2902-2's skin, and a gravelly American accent for the skeleton. To avoid confusion in this document, text below that is unbolded represents SCP-2902-2's skin. Text in bold represents SCP-2902-2's skeleton. I'm Miles. I'm Miles. And we're gonna put a smile on your face, so relax, and stay with us a while. We'll walk you to the story, we hope it won't bore you, and we'll show you how the Bone Cat attained its glory. SCP-2902-2 skin comes forward, while the skeleton retreats behind it. I wandered through the streets of an Indian town. I was always hungry, my fur quite grungy. Thrown out of my home, and so I roamed, until I had nothing but skin and bones. SCP-2902-2's body switches positions. So for years I was alone just wandering, until I met this kitty named Nandan. SCP-2902-2's skin rolls its eyes. Honestly, Bones, and couplets you try to make. Shut up, rug boy. SCP-2902-1 stops clapping in normal voice. Miles! SCP-2902-2's head bows in apparent embarrassment. Right, sorry, ahem. <clears throat> Rhythm resumes. How Nandan was nice and we liked him at once. He, he gave us a meal. Water runs right through me. But his uncle Rakesh was a rather mean man. He hit Nandan in the head with a frying pan. SCP-2902-1 claps hands loudly and pulls head. Skeleton falls out with skull shaking and teeth chattering. SCP-2902-1 replaces head and resumes beat. SCP-2902-2's bodies walk in place alongside each other. A circus came in. Nandan wanted in. So he ran away again for the umpteenth time, and we tagged along, and stayed all day long, watching the freaks in the act the Cali up chimes. But Rakesh drove up to take Nandan back, and Nandan screamed and cried, and Nandan kicked and Nandan fought, but against his uncle it was all for naught. So I leapt into action and attacked. SCP-2902-2 skin hisses loudly, and I raked that man along the back. SCP-2902-2 skeleton bands claws against floor. But Rakesh was stronger and he got me tuckered. And ran me over with his car, that sick mother! SCP-2902-1 in normal voice. Miles! SCP-2902-2 skeleton looks at SCP-2902-1. What? SCP-2902-1 sighs and resumes beat. Tempo is much slower. SCP-2902-2 skeleton curls up on ground in fetal position, with skin covering face like a shroud. SCP-2902-1 begins to sing in a lamenting voice. So for weeks after that, everything went dark, and I felt the pain of my broken heart, trapped in a body that was crushed and cold, and mixed in the darkness of worlds untold. Tempo begins to quicken again, as SCP-2902-1 begins to sing progressively faster. But I came back. Yes, I did. I came back. Yes, I did. Through the work of the finest of the circus's highest. The mysterious beings with magic profound. Yes, it was them. Could it be? Bring in the clowns! Bring in the clowns! SCP-2902-1 begins to repeat, bring in the clowns, in a multitude of voices for several seconds before separating itself. SCP-2902-1 skeleton leaps onto SCP-2902-2s. The bones from each become mixed together, while SCP-2902-2 screeches loudly. So they dug me up. Right out from the soil. 
plopped me down on the table and began their toil. Both skeletons continued to loudly mix with each other. As the clowns did their work, it was pure confusion. Lots of whistles and honking, accidental contusions. My old skin was cast, and my bones removed, and stuffed into the body of a main coon anu. SCP-2902-2 rejoins its body into one and stands up, looking around in apparent surprise. The first thing I saw as I came back from the dead was a man most peculiar with an upside-down head. SCP-2902-1 skeleton twists its skull upside down and kneels as SCP-2902-2 walks up to it. And he said, the clowns did their work well, take a look at you now. Come with us as we travel the world. You now have the powers others only could dream, and to make your act perfect, I found you a team. SCP-2902-1 comes back together and pets SCP-2902-2, SCP-2902-1 in normal voice. So Miles and I were reunited, and the circus became our home, and that, my friends, is the end of the tale of the man, the cat, and their bones. SCP-2902-1 and SCP-2902-2 bow to Researcher Chang. Interview is considered concluded. End Log 1027